Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Tech Talk. I'm your host, Jeff Hootsell with Automax. As you can see, we are filming remote amid the COVID-19 crisis, so we're all dealing from the work from home thing, but we're still going on, and we've still got some great and fantastic guests from the world of IT. And today is no different. We are welcomed all the way from Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. We've got Grant Gibson with Cyber Ready. Grant, thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely. It's great to be here. Thanks. So, Grant, for folks that aren't familiar with Cyber Ready, maybe tell us a little about the company and what you guys focus on. Yeah, we're, we're really focused on the small to medium-sized uh, business market. We want to help them understand that cybersecurity is achievable. Uh, I think a lot of times these, uh, these t style companies, they look at cybersecurity, they're aware of the risks associated with it, but they don't, may not have a base to really understand how they can get there. So our goal is to help them find a path that's affordable and achievable so that they can have a secure cyber base to provide for their customers. Yeah. So obviously, you know, we've talked a lot about this, this shift that's happening right now with companies being forced to work remote, uh, trying to enable their employees to get set up and keep operating, you know, as they do normally when they're in the office, um, which is great. And there's a lot of emergence of cloud technologies and things of like that and make that really possible. But from your perspective, that also opens up a whole new world of threats as well. So Grant, what are you seeing in the marketplace now from a threat standpoint? What do customers need to be aware of? Right. Well, phishing is one of the opportunities that's being really targeted right now. They know that, uh, you know, hackers are opportunistic. So they see people moving online. They see them moving home. They see them moving remote. So they know there's, there's new attack vectors there for them to go after when they're looking at how they're going to exploit data. And that's really what we're seeing. Phishing has been a big part of that. Trying to get passwords is a big part of that because now there's this, there's this hole in the network that's so large to allow everybody to get in. They know the best way to get in with, is with passwords. And of course, passwords have pr traditionally been not well guarded and not well taken care of within the industry. Some companies are great at it. Some companies have been struggling with it. But at the end of the day, that's really where they're looking. Yeah. So if you had two or three recommendations you'd make to that kind of small mid-sized business owner out there that's that's trying to make sure they keep operating, but also stay secure and is it's wise about that, what are the top two or three things you would say? Passwords, it sounds like a password policy would be top yeah. of this. Yeah. Coming up with a password policy, even, even uh, if you don't have one, create one. Uh, we've advised a lot of our partners and most of them have taken action to go ahead and do a password change now outside of the regular scope of things, right? If, if, if you haven't changed password in the wall or you don't know when your employees have last changed their password, why not do a company-wide password reset right now just to force them to go ahead and change that just in case there's been a compromise? I think that's the biggest thing people can do, but also do a little bit of training or a little bit of awareness or even have a little bit of discussion about phishing emails and when the, what that means and how they might be how someone might introduce a phishing email to them and how that might compromise data. I, I think that's the biggest short-term risk that most companies are gonna face in this environment. And just doing those two things will go a long way. Yeah, so the phishing piece I imagine is tough, right? So it's the human element of people are wanting to see news, anything with a certain subject line or a headline or looks official is gonna be tempting not to click on or download. Um, so is it just that education piece that you recommend? Well, you know, I think I think I think most companies already have some kind of spam filtering in place, uh, be it because they use the G Suite or because they have an internal server that's got these things taken care of. So, uh, so I really do think it's just the education piece is going to be the biggest and quickest win for them. In the long term, you really want to evaluate how you're managing incoming email and how you're scanning and 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 looking for these kind of effects. But in the short term, it's really just about awareness. We need to pe people to be aware of what threats they're facing so they can get through this. Sure. Well, so I, noticed, I know you're working from home as well. I see your, your background there. Obviously, you're, you're a former Marine. Yeah, I spent some time in the Marine Corps. It's, it's really what developed me into an IT professional. I, you know, people thank me for my service all the time. But really, the reality is... Uh, they did more for me than I did for them. So while I was, while it's great to be thanked for my service and I appreciate the appreciation, I really appreciate the Marine Corps because it's brought me where I am today to have the security mindset, which I've brought into cybersecurity and the technical know-how really. Yeah. Well, we're certainly are, are thankful for your service. Hopefully that comes in handy. I know working from home, I know you've got four kids. Hopefully that Marine background is, is keeping them in line and helping you get some work done <laughs> as you go throughout your day. It How does. does that transition you from, from going from the office to working remote, what's that transition been like for your company? 
It's uh, it, it's been surprisingly easy uh, because we are a very cloud based company. We use a lot of cloud technologies, so bandwidth back at the office was not an issue for us. Uh, that that was probably the biggest challenges some of the companies are facing today. As I talk to them and they work through their challenges, is if they have servers on site and people need to access those servers through a VPN, uh, bandwidth is a challenge. Uh, on the other side of that coin. Uh, our challenge is like everybody else's, it's managing everything, right? We're used to an in-house management structure where we can supervise and we can, we, we can make progress uh, as a team that way. And now to do that, we have to do that through video. We have to do that remotely. And trying to get those pieces of the puzzle uh, ha has been tough. Finding a good video platform to have our meetings consistently has, has, has been too much of a challenge. We, we have a couple of good tools there, but we've wanted to be wary of it because just like a lot of companies have gone to Zoom and Zoom doesn't have that end-to-end -end encryption. So those conversations might not be private. And when you're talking about business intelligence, you definitely want that information to be private. I mean, that's pretty important. Um, but finding tools that, that allow you to have the privacy you need is very, very important. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good point. I think obviously we've seen some of the news about Zoom uh, lately, and hopefully there sounds like they're jumping on it and trying to take some immediate action to to kind of patch up those holes they've got in their system. And I know they've got I think reported over 200 million users are active on their site now, so it's a pretty big jump from what it was a few months ago. So, yeah, they're you know they're not going away, uh, especially as they adapt to this and they make the changes necessary to meet business needs. Uh, they're going to come out of this probably one of the strongest players in this market. And, and I imagine they've got a very good future. Sure. No, that's great. So great. So if people want to find out more about your company, uh, where can they go? Where should they go to check you guys out? They can go to CIBready.com and they can learn all about us and our cyber ranges and our and, and the tools we can help to make them successful and really understand that that when they're doing that, it's not going to break the bank. We're going to find ways to make them successful within the budgets that they have. No, that's great. Grant, it's awesome, buddy. It's always a pleasure to, to chat with you. I appreciate you coming on the show today. Obviously, we thank you again for your service. Hope you and your family stay safe out there and and for the rest of you tuning in, we uh, hope you guys stay safe where you are. Continue to listen to the scientists and the doctors out there and, and do your part to flatten that curve. We hope we'll see you guys again here soon next time on the next Tech Talk. Until then, take care.